Last month, going into earlier this month, I did a Disney Pixar marathon where I watched all 22 movies on Disney+. Plus. Well, not all of them, because I've got The Incredibles and Cars on DVD. So here it is. At long last, I bring to you a ranking of all 22 Disney Pixar flicks. Bad days! Entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duol, better known to y'all as the Big D. This time around I bring to you a very special ranking and this time it's on Disney Pixar flicks. That's right, I'm going to rank, I'm ranking all 22 movies. Now, though Soul is just a, about almost another two months, you, which we hope that's still going to come. I have ranked all the other 22 movies, so from, from Toy Story, their breakout hit, to Onward, their recent hit. So I hope you are ready, then if you are, then here we go. Number 22 is... Cars 2 uh, from 2011. Now, I went and saw this. It's fun in ways, but I know this really got a bit dissed in my view for not being as good as its predecessor. And, well, it kind of had more of a spy feel. Now, even though I did like the performances from everyone, including Owen Wilson as Lightning McQueen and Larry the Cable Guy as Tom Mayer, well, they apparently, uh, are about to hell as Lightning decides to enter the World Grand Prix, but however, Mayor accidentally becomes sidetracked with international espionage. <sighs> it would also be the last film directed by John Lasseter. He would be Splitsville from Disney about seven years later after this. But, I'm just going to say, it's fun. It just didn't have all the appearances from everyone else and what have you. And I know since we didn't get to see, well, and we couldn't get to see Doc anymore, because Paul Newman passed away three years before this came out as well. But, um, some of the new characters weren't too bad, uh, I mean, since we had a few, uh, like Finn and Holly and Francesco, yeah, some of those new characters weren't too bad. Cars 2 is, it's oh, fine in ways, so, but it's, well, in ways, okay good, but not good good. So, anyway, that's the bottom of the chain. So, enough said. Number 21 is... The Good Dinosaur from 2015. Now, I had um, kind of mixed thoughts on seeing this. I I didn't think this was going to be good at all. I mean, because I thought this wasn't going to have much dialogue or, or something like that. But, well, it's, well, not too bad. I mean, follows a young and timid dinosaur. I can't pronounce what, what this kind of is. Um, wait a minute. Apatosaurus, sorry, who meets an unlikely human friend while traveling through a harsh, dangerous, and mysterious landscape. It does have a pretty decent voice acting cast, and this was the directorial debut of Pearson. Now, I must say that this would actually be Pixar's real big disappointment, not Cars 2. This was kind of a major disappointment. So, uh, yeah. But Arlo was a pretty good character. S Spot, the young cave boy, yeah. I did like some of the other Well, some of the other characters were pretty good, but this was just kind of a slight disappointment and what have you. 
But it was still an okay... But still, like Cars 2, it's okay good as well, so... Now you know. So, let's keep going. Number 20 is... Cars 3 from 2017. Now, this was a bit of a redemption over the... Over the previous one, this did a little better. I mean, we went back to basics, going back to Radiator Springs. This was also the directorial debut of Brian Fee. And, well, I'm going to say this was much better. And uh, I'm just going to say that it had some good moments. I mean, once again, we had great performances from the voice acting cast. Lightning McQueen, of course, sets out to prove to a new generation of high-tech race cars that he's still the best race car in the world. Anyway, yeah, we got some pretty darn good performances from everyone. Um, we got Army Hammer's Jackson Storm, McQueen's new racing rival. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. And the, a lot of the new characters we got are pretty good. Let me... I'm trying to find all these. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. Yes. Okay. Oops, sorry. I'm I'm trying to get the info because I've only because this was only my second time I'm watching this. Okay, yeah. And some of the other new characters: Natalie Surin, who was voiced by Kerry Washington, is good. I also like that Monster School Bust, uh, Miss Fritter. That was a pretty good character. Yeah, some of the characters in this movie were pretty good. This was a big redemption for Cars. But I, I will see another one. But Cars Three is pretty good. It has a good story. I mean. A big redemption over the same one. Still not one of the greats, but it's still good in ways. Okay, back to this ranking. Number 19 is... Finding Dory from 2016. Well, the movie is good. Good in some ways, but not good, not as good as Finding Nemo is, which that film's a ways on this list. We'll see where that winds up. While it's factually reasonable enough and what have you, I mean, well, we got a different voice from Nemo because I know Alexander Gould was all grown up. Only Ellen DeGeneres and Albert Brooks return. This is sort of a sequel and spin off to Finding Nemo. But. I'm going to say I didn't quite enjoy this as much as its predecessor, but it did have some fun moments and what have you. It became a monster hit at the box office. One of the few Disney Pixar flicks to make over a billion worldwide. Yeah. I mean, Dory's trying to find her parents and what have you. And runs into some old friends and all that jazz. While Nemo and his dad Marlin are looking for her. Yeah, mostly it's just mostly some new characters we see. Which is good and all. but Which are good, but not as good as the ones from Finding Nemo, though. But Finding Dory's an okay good movie, from my point of view. I'm sure a lot of y'all liked it. But this was just okay good for me. So, enough said. Number 18 is... Ratatouille from 2007. 
Yeah, now this, I want to say, was pretty good. I mean, after I revisited it for the first time since I'd only seen it once, but that's been a long time ago. But I think this was pretty good. Now, I liked our main character, Remy, this little rat who dreams of becoming a chef and tries to achieve his goal by forming an alliance with a Parisian restaurant's garbage boy. And believe me, it's pretty fun. I mean, Patton Oswalt voices Remy, he was real good. The film was directed by Brad Bird, who recently did The Incredibles. Now, I liked all the other characters as well. Including, um, Alfredo and Chef Skinner. Let's see. And Colette. Yeah. This was pretty good. It was fun. I mean, helping this here garbage boy become a chef. Yeah, now that's really something. Ratatouille's not too bad. It's a pretty good movie. But I like it for certain reasons. So, that's about all I'm gonna tell you. Okay, enough said. Number 17 is... Brave from 2012. Now, this film I had been wanting to see since the day it came out, but then I soon lost interest in watching it, considering Disney had the nerve of making its main character one of their princesses. Merida, I mean, Merida, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm mispronouncing it. Merida, that's, I think that's how you say it. Yeah, I'm... I still say that it belongs with Pixar, okay? Anyway, now this was dedicated to Steve Jobs, who passed away after the release of this, yeah. But anyway, it had a pretty good voice acting cast, including Kelly McDonald, who, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, voices. Merida, Emma Thompson plays her mother, and Billy Connolly as her dad, King Fergus. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, some a pretty good voice acting cast. I'm gonna say it's not that bad of a movie. After I finally got to watch it, it had some fun laughs. It's not one of Disney and Pixar's best, but it does its extreme best. I thought Brave was. Fun than what I had anticipated. But overall, I think it's pretty good in ways. I mean, it had some pretty good action, what have you, in, in some parts anyway. <laughs> but anyway, that's brave for y'all. Number 16 is... Onward, from earlier this year, in 2020. Now, this, of course, was one of the last ever Disney... Now, this was one of the last movies I went and saw before the you-know-what occurred. But anyway, I'm going to say, while it ranked in my top five of the movies I went and saw, I had seen... When seen or saw on Netflix and what have you, uh, and Disney Plus that came out in the first half of the year. This movie's pretty fun in ways. It's, again, not as good as, uh, well, not quite the best Disney Pixar movie, but it has a fun, a lot of fun stuff. I mean, I liked all the characters. Tom Holland and Chris Pratt do an absolutely good job on this in playing, um, Our, with playing our two main characters, Ian and Barley Lightfoot, these here elves. Yeah, and see Julia Louis Dreyfus as their mother, Laurel, and Octavia Spencer doing the Manticore. Yeah, really, really good. It's pretty fun. Onward had pretty good fun. 
fancy, well, fancy adventure, what have you feel to it. So I thought it was pretty good. I loved it. After watching on Disney Plus, I liked it a little more. So, all works pretty good. Number 15 is... Coco from 2017. Now, this was Disney and Pixar's other movie after Cars 3 came out. Anyway, now, this... I had some mixed hopes for this movie, but after watching it a second time since I rented it, I will say this is a pretty good movie. I mean, I compare... I kind of did, in a way, compare this to The Book of Life. Anyway, it follows a 12-year-old boy named Miguel who is accidentally transported to the land of the dead, where he seeks the help of his deceased musician great-great-grandfather to return to his family among the living and to reverse his family's ban on music. Yeah. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah, banging music or singing, what have you. Now, I've seen that in, two, in other things, you know, like Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning. And I know that was kind of the plot for the book, The Chinese Siamese Cat, where it's about that show of Sagwa, The Chinese Siamese Cat, yeah. But anyway, Coco, I think, is a pretty fun experience. It has some pretty good voices and what have you. And so I think that's a pretty good movie. Okay. Number 14 is... Incredibles 2 from 2018. And I went and saw this movie, and uh, I recently revisited it on Disney Plus after it came to the service. Well, I do like this movie, not... Not quite as much as the original, but it had it comes close to it and what have you. Now we got most of the voice acting cast. I know they had to get a new voice for Dash, which is completely understandable. But anyway, we got the rest back. Craig T. Nelson, Holly Hunter, Sarah Val, and Samuel L. Jackson. I think this was just a real fun experience. But boy, we had to wait like almost, well, 14 years for this. I mean, now it follows the Parr family as they try to restore the public's trust in superheroes while balancing their family life. Only to come at a new foe who seeks to turn the populace against all superheroes. Which was a pretty good one. I mean, now they eventually get Elastigirl to be the real true Hero, and while Mr. Incredible has to take care of the youngsters this time. <laughs> Let's see now. Let me see, I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah. Um, and of course, our villain, our main antagonist, the Screen Slaver. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Not quite good as Syndrome, though, but it's still fun. Of course, um, Brad Bird directed it. He also voiced him. Um, I didn't even know this was him, but he also voices Ed, Edna Mode. Yeah, uh, who happens to be a fashion designer for superheroes. Yeah, really something. So, Incredibles 2 is. While still fun in ways, but it still got come close. Now, I appreciate them trying, well, managing to continue on after the end of the first movie with them taking on the Underminers. So, that was real good. So, that's Incredibles 2. I'll review that sometime down the road, maybe. Maybe all of these. But anyway, back to the ranking. Number 13 is...
Wally from 2008. Now, this is another flick I kind of have mixed thoughts on, but after I finally took the time to watch it, at first I didn't think this was going to have much dialogue, like the later good dinosaur, but it proved me wrong. It had lots of fun, excitement, what have you. And also, I didn't realize this was a bit of a romance feel to it, but anyway... It follows a solitary trash compactor robot on a future uninhabitable, deserted Earth left to clean up garbage. But however, he's visited by a probe sent by the starship Axiom, a robot called Eve, with whom he falls in love and pursues across the galaxy, which that proved to be something big. And apparently, after watching it, I realized I liked it. So... Hmm. Yeah, the voice acting cast isn't too bad. I did enjoy this, and I did like Andrew Stanton's directing and what have you. So, Wally was just a pretty good movie. And, like I said, I liked the atmosphere of it being the future and what have you. Best looking future I, I had ever seen in a movie, where if it was live action or animated. I think Wally was worth checking out at long last. <laughs> okay. Number 12 is. A Bug's Life from 1998. Now, this was Disney and Pixar's second film. And I'm going to say, after revisiting it, since I, I do believe I have it on video, I'm going to say it's absolutely really good. Uh, directed by John Lasseter, it involves a misfit ant who is looking for tough warriors to save his colony from hungry grasshoppers, only to recruit a group of insects and turn out to be an inept circus troupe. But anyway, it has a pretty good amount of voice acting, good ones. Dave Foley, uh, Kevin Spacey, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Hayden Pantier. Let me see. Phyllis Diller, David Hyde Pierce, Dennis Leary, Jonathan Harris, Madeline Kahn, Bonnie Hunt. Oh, the list goes on. Anyway, I think this was really good. Anyway. Filmed it pretty well and getting good reviews, but unfortunately it kind of caused a little bit of a con well, stir up between... Well, stir up of a feud between Steve Jobs and... And Mr. Laster, well, up against Jeffrey Katzenberg of DreamWorks, who released their first ever anime feature. I think it was their first anime feature, Ants, that same year. So, well, Ants is is good, but I'm realizing I like The Bug's Life. No offense, The Bug's Life is definitely a fun movie. And I really like it after revisiting it, after I hadn't seen it in years, but it's still a Fun movie with a great voice acting cast. Really good. And number 11 is... Monsters University from 2013. Now, I had wanted to see this, but never could get the chance to watch. I mean, I had stuff in the way. I just had forgotten all about it. But anyway, as a prequel to Monsters Incorporated, which we'll see where that winds up as we are outside the gates to the top ten. This film's pretty good after I finally watched it on Disney+. Plus. Monsters University is absolutely a very good film. So, uh, we got John Goodman, Billy Crystal, and... See Bushimi back in this, well, yeah, plus Bob Pierce and John Ratzenberger. 
I mean, I really enjoyed the, the performances from this whole cast. Dan Scanlon, who directed this, did a good job. But even so, I just enjoyed how Mike and Sully got to meet each other and become best friends. Uh, I'm just going to say this was really a pretty good one. Now, let's see. Now, they actually did produce an animated short film titled Party Central, which took place shortly after the events of the movie. But anyway, after watching it, it proved to be a good one after all. So, anyway, Monsters University is absolutely a very good movie. <laughs> I may watch it again, and I may review it. You never can tell with me. <laughs> okay, that about covers it. Let's get to the big ones. <laughs> Number 10 is... Up, from 2009. I really didn't know what to think of this. I mean, it looked pretty interesting after seeing its trailer and what have you. Now, after seeing it, I kind of enjoyed it a bit. After watching it a second time, which, of course, was on Disney+, Plus, I will say that this was just so incredible. Watching him, this old dude traveling to Paradise Falls in his old house equipped with balloons after the death of his wife. Anyway. Which, of course, um, what he did was promise his late wife that he would fulfill his dream to see the wilds of South America. Anyway, with the help of an earnest boy, they have on a real fun-filled adventure. I really did enjoy this. Ed Asner does a good job as, well, the old guy, Carl. And Russell, the young boy, character is pretty good, and See, Charles F. Muntz, who, of course, is an explorer who also happened to be the antagonist. Christopher Plummer voiced that character really good, actually. Anyway, this would actually be the second anime feature to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture since Beauty and the Beast in 1991. So, anyway, Up was just so much fun. Directed by Peter Doctor, I'm going to say Up is an absolute fun movie. I mean, while I liked how you got to see some of the world and what have you, yeah, the environments were really good. The dogs were pretty good, too. <laughs> so, up, that, up is pretty good. Okay, back to the countdown. Number nine is... Cars from 2006. I love this movie. I don't care what anybody says. This is a very good movie. I love the performances we got from everyone. Owen Wilson is Lightning McQueen. Um, we had By Hunt as Sally and... Peter Newman in his final performance as Doc Hudson. Let's see. I liked all the other characters. Luigi, Ramon. Let's see. The Sheriff, Sarge, Flo. And Fillmore, voiced by George Carlin, one of his final performances. Yeah, that was pretty good. I just enjoyed this. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Don't forget to hold my ear voice. By none and Larry the Cable Guy himself. You're done. Yeah. Tomeyer was what really made this very enjoyable, but I still liked Lining as well. The characters are real good. Ray Ear Springs is real good. The music's gray in this. I don't know what to tell you. It was... Just so much fun. John Lasseter directed this. It's just so much fun. 
and it was just a fun-filled road trip of a flick. Yep. Okay. Number eight is... Inside Out from 2015. Now, at first, I didn't know what this would be about, but after watching it a few years ago, it was pretty good. And after I revisit, it was even better. Now, I love the, the characters in this. Of course, you should know what this film is about. It's, it's in the mind of a young girl named Riley, where five personified emotions, Joy, who is voiced by Amy Poehler, who gives a great job, Sadness, voiced by Phil Smith. Anger, voiced by Louis Black. Fear, played by Bill Hader. And Disgust, played by Minnie Cowling. Try to lead her through life as she and her parents adjust to their new surroundings after moving from Minnesota to California in San Francisco. That is. Yes. Anyway. I'm going to say this was really... A, a good experience. Now, of course, if you haven't seen the trailers for Disney and Pixar's newest attempt, which will, which will come, will possibly be coming out this November, Soul, it's um that's almost kind of like it, but except maybe with a different turn of events or something like that, <laughs> different twist or I don't know. But anyway, Inside Out is really a fun movie. And I'm just going to say I enjoyed it after revisiting it. Seeing the other various environments inside the mind of Riley. Absolutely amazing. So Inside Out is absolutely a fun experience. Okay, enough said. Number seven is... Monsters Incorporated from 2001. Love this movie. I hadn't seen it in a long time. I've watched it numerous times when Stars aired it, which that was actually the first time a Disney Pixar anime feature ever came since their first ones never did come because they weren't even airing anime features. They were airing most Disney recent Disney flicks, but not... All of them, unfortunately. But anyway, I loved Monsters Incorporated. It was just so much fun. Of course, uh, this was directed by Pete Docter in his directorial debut for this. Anyway, we get to meet our two main monsters, James P. Sully Sullivan and his one-eyed partner and best friend, Mike Wazowski. As a... Well, work for Monsters Incorporated, a titular, the titular energy producing factory, which generates power by scaring human children. But however, the monster world believes that the children are toxic, and when one sneaks into the factory, a girl named Boo, they must return home before it's too late. This is just so much fun. I enjoyed it. It had lots of fun stuff. The characters are absolutely good. A lot of performances from John Goodman, Billy Crystal, plus Steve Buscemi, James Coburn, in one of his last few movies, and Jennifer Tilly, plus all the others. This was just a fun movie. And I like the score, which I do believe Randy Newman did. Of course, I wouldn't, well, have enjoyed it if I heard um, Goodman and Crystal performing. If I didn't have you, that was so good. <laughs> yeah, Monsters Incorporated. It's pretty good. Number six is... Toy Story 3 from 2010. This, I'm going to say, well, this kind of might give me controversy or something, but since I've got a look below the others, but... I still love this movie. I loved how the story turns out. And it's, of course, Lee Unkrich directed this. And he was co-director of the second movie, which we'll see where that winds up. 
Anyway, the same voice acting cast is back. We got Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, Joan Cusack, Don Rickles, all the others. Only except, of course, we have Blake Clark on board, voicing the Slinky Dog, since Jim Varney passed away uh, in 2000. But anyway, this was just so much fun. Oh yeah, we also had back on board Estelle Harris, John Morris, Laurie Metcalf, R. Lee Ermey, and his final voice role as Sarge. And he passed away eight years later. And even Joey Benson, who, of course, you know, voiced a certain Little Mermaid for Disney as Barbie. Yeah, and she meets Ken. Yeah, the toys act... Actually, all of them get sent to a daycare center, even though Andy, who was now grown up, decided to just leave for college with Woody. But soon he decides to just save Buzz and the others, but they get sent to this daycare center. Yeah. Where they get to meet all sorts of characters, including, um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Lots of love, Bear. I believe that's... No, wait, no, sorry. Lots of hug and bear. Whoops, my mistake. <laughs> I've only watched this a few times, so bear with me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> little joke, bear. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just having some fun with you. But even so, in the end, I think this was real good. I like the end thing to when Andy brought, well, Woody and all the others to little girl Bonnie. I just think that was really good. And we would see her again in the fourth one, which that's coming up in just a little bit on this. Or should I say... I ain't gonna tell you. But Toy Story 3 is just so good. Love it. Number five is... Toy Story 4 from last year in 2019. Yeah, this would be the grand finale. I really like the story and what have you. Forky was definitely a pretty good a pretty good addition to the group. And I really liked how it all ends and what have you. We get to see some new characters Including Gabby Gabby and Dick uh, uh, Duke Kaboom. Yeah. Not too bad. Ducky and Bunny, very good. Yeah, we got to see all sorts of fun field characters and what have you. And Bo Peep was back as well. I'm just going to say that this was just a fun blast. It was really something. So. Enough said about that. Okay. Number four is... The Incredibles from 2004. I love this movie. This was one of the few movies that became one of my first few DVD titles in my collection. I absolutely loved it. Brad Bird's directing was real good. We got... Real good voice acting cast, including Craig T. Nelson, Mr. Fantastic, Holly Hunter as Elastic Girl, and Samuel L. Jackson as Frozone. And of course, we had Jason Lee as Syndrome, great villain. I really loved it. I, I loved how we got to see him take on those big Omni Droid or Omnibots or something. Uh, but I really think this is just one of the great, and it's a great animated superhero flick. I love it, The Incredibles. Okay, now for the final three. Number three is... Toy Story from 1995, the film that put Pixar on the map. First attempt with Disney, I will say it's great. And of course, this film is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. I'm just going to say I love the movie. 
I love the story. And the characters, Woody, voiced by Tom Hanks. Buzz Lightyear, voiced by Tim Allen, who, of course, was still currently big on TV's Home Improvement at the time, and after he previously starred in the Santa Claus. Yeah. All the other characters are real good. Mr. Potato Head, the Slinky Dog, Rex, Ham. Everybody was real good. I liked all the places we went. We had the Corinthians, Pizza Planet, and see in Sid's house. Yeah, really something. I'm just gonna say Toy Story. If we hadn't gotten this, we couldn't have had any other good movies to come from Disney and Pixar for these last 25 years. Thanks. It's just great. Oh yes, and you got a friend in me. By Randy Newman's an absolute good song. It's played in the beginning of all those movies. So anyway, Toy Story is just so good. I do love it. Okay, and the final two. This this wasn't quite much of a tough decision. So number two is Finding Nemo from two thousand three. I love this movie. It is just one of the most greatest films that took place underwater, maybe aside from The Little Mermaid. But this is a real good fish tale. I love the performances from everyone Albert Brooks, Ellen DeGeneres, and of course, young Alexander Gould voicing Nemo. We also had um, Willem Dafoe and. Many others. Let's see. Andrew Stanton, along with Leon Critch, gave us this, directed it. I'm just going to say, there's not much to say about it. Just about the story of a little fish who gets taken away and ends up in a, a aqua aquarium, a little aquarium fish tank with a bunch of other fish and a dentist's office. Yeah. But anyway. It was just so much fun. Believe me, Ellen DeGeneres' Dory is an absolute character in this. <laughs> Believe me, I laugh almost every time she tries to do this. Yeah. And I just keep swimming. Yeah, that part, that's a good That's a good part. I, I love Finding Nemo. You can't go wrong with this story or this movie either. <laughs> but I do love it. Okay, and now, the Coupe de Grasse, the finishing touch. Number one is... Toy Story 2 from 1999. Yeah, but that's my favorite of all the Disney Pixar anime features. I love this even. Almost as, well, a little bit more over the first one, but hey, it's a draw. I like... I love them both because they're just fun. I mean, I liked how the story being revolved around Woody this time. As learns he's from a long lost um, television series called Woody's Roundup, which of course has a great theme done by Riders in the Sky. And well, he gets to meet Jesse, Bullseye, and the prospector Sinky Pete, voiced by Kelsey Grammer. And uh, John Cusack does a good job in voicing Jesse. Really good. And t this kind of surprised me. I got to hear Joey Benson for the first time ever outside of The Little Mermaid as Barbie. This is only the second time I heard her as a, well, outside of Little Mermaid because she voiced a Thumbelina in the extremely underrated anime feature Don Bluth did back in the mid-1990s. I think it was year 1993 or 1994. But I may be wrong. But anyway. No, I'm pretty sure I'm right. But anyway, Toy Story 2 is just amazing. I mean, we... Well, been stolen by this toy collector because, well, that's when he soon gets to meet the others characters from Woody's Roundup. But anyway, it's just so much fun. I just gotta say, everything turned out real good. This will also be Jim Varney's last ever film. Well, 
one of the last ones he did, because I know he did a, the movie Treehouse Hostage before his death. But anyway, when the toys come after him, it's really something. Especially when a new improved Buzz Lightyear switches places with the real one we have seen since the first one. <laughs> but anyway, I think the story is absolutely great. I loved every bit of Toy Story 2. It does so much fun! Yeah, and it's my number one favorite Disney Pixar movie of them all. End of story. Okay, so what did you think of this ranking? What's your what's your favorite Disney Pixar flick? If you've already done one of these rankings, congrats. But what's your favorite Disney Pixar flick of all time? Your your top favorite, number one. Please feel free to tell me in the comment section below. If you like the video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well and be a part <clears throat> Of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you my Super September schedule. Thanks again for watching. Now, if you like this, you can check out more Disney Pixar throughout this here. Go t If you want more, go to the upper left-hand corner and see my Toy Story playlist where I reviewed all four movies. In the upper right-hand corner is my review of Finding Nemo. And the bottom left-hand corner is my review of The Incredibles. Now, I will review more Disney Pixar movies down the road. Possibly during, in December when I do a month of Disney. We'll see. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, video games, music, etc., then I'm your guy. Now, I might be doing a different, a new channel. We'll see what happens. So, until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.